Hello, my name is Mark Kearney and I am a second year PhD student at CPES where I am advised by Dr. Christina DiMarino. My research interests include high voltage, high density electronics packaging, as well as computer modeling, simulation, and optimization techniques. Today I will be talking about the design and optimization of a PCB integrated bus bar and gate driver for a high density 10 kilovolt silicon carbide MOSFET power module. High voltage, high speed silicon carbide MOSFETs bring new capabilities for smaller, more efficient, and more reliable power electronic systems in a wide range of fields. To fully take advantage of the new capabilities of silicon carbide MOSFETs offer, new innovative high density packages must be developed to minimize the parasitics in order to maximize the switching speeds and minimize loss. Shown on the left is an exploded view of a novel wire bondless 10 kV silicon carbide MOSFET power module developed at CPES. The module takes advantage of a stack topology with the devices mounted between two DBA substrate stacks. This stack up is encapsulated in a high temperature housing and interface to a PCB integrated bus bar. This module topology allows us to achieve a power density figure of 18 watts per millimeter squared, four times higher than sim similar silicon carbide power modules. This compact module design is made possible by voiding the clearance and creepage requirements between terminals of the module. Shown here is a cross section of the module which shows how careful design has removed any in-air path between the terminals. The high voltage terminals are completely isolated from one another, sealed beneath the module housing by the encapsulant and above the module housing by the PCB integrated bus bar. Voiding the need for a standard creepage and clearance requirements allows us to reduce the terminal to terminal spacing from the IEC recommended value of 40 millimeters to only 11 millimeters. This gives us an effective 73% reduction in size. However, with this drastic reduction in terminal to terminal spacing comes increased electric field strength around the terminals, which must be carefully managed to allow for breakdown free and partial discharge free operation of the module. Shown in the top left is a 2D CAD model of the field grading geometry inside the PCB integrated bus bar. This geometry is carefully designed using an FEA driven numerical optimization technique to ensure the electric field in these regions are kept at a manageable level. Using a numerical optimization technique allows us to optimize the interface design for a large number of design variables and a high degree of complexity, all while reducing the design time. The geometric structure to be optimized, such as that field grading geometry we looked at on the previous slide, is first parameterized in terms of its design variables. From this parametric model, a 2D boundary value problem can be formed where the boundary conditions of the problem are the optimization variables. This workflow has been implemented in MATLAB where we're able to use a variety of off the shelf and custom optimization algorithms to optimize the design. Shown on the right is an example of using the optimization technique to reduce the peak electric field of this field grading geometry. After only five iterations of the optimization algorithm, the peak electric field in the air and in the FR4 are reduced by about 12% and 10% respectively. Over the course of this project, two versions of the module system interface were designed. Uh, version one of the interface was designed entirely using a manual optimization process in ANSYS Maxwell and, and took approximately eight weeks to design. The interface was built and partial discharge tested under 60 Hertz sinusoidal excitation. During tests, the interface demonstrated a partial discharge inception voltage of 8.5 kV RMS, which is below our 10 kV operating point of the module. Uh, the interface was then redesigned uh, using a numerical optimization tool. Uh, due to the decreased iterative simulation time of the tool, the design process took only one week, and the design demonstrated a partial discharge voltage of 11.6 kV RMS under an identical 60 Hz sinusoidal excitation. This improvement in partial discharge performance comes with a 10% decrease in terminal terminal spacing due to the increased pin count of the version 2 interface. Here is an example of how the performance of the module to bus bar interface is experimentally validated. On the bottom left is a photo of the partial discharge dummy module, which is a module constructed to be electrostatically equivalent to a functional module, but with no devices in it. The module is fixed to the bus bar and excited under a 60 Hertz sinusoidal excitation. 
Under this excitation, significant partial discharge does not occur until 11.6 kV RMS, as shown in the PRBD plot in the bottom right. This PDIV allows for safe partial discharge free operation up to the device's rating of 10 kV. This is the partial discharge dummy module that is designed to be electrostatically equivalent to a functional power module. The dummy module is mated to the bus bar test board for the PD testing the interface. Both the bus bar and dummy module are independently tested before mating them together to ensure no manufacturing defects are present. Here's the completed bus bar in integrated into the gate driver PCB with the power module mated to the bottom. The PCB has onboard decoupling capacitors on the DC bus, gate drivers for both the high side and low side devices, integrated short circuit and overload protection, and fiber optic inputs for the control signal. The gate driver is set up for a double pulse test to dynamically characterize the power module. A capacitor bank is used as the source and inductive load is attached to the output. 16 kV rated isolated power supplies are used to power the gate drivers. Here is a preliminary switching result captured during a 2 kV double pulse test. Uh, the bus voltage is lower during this test because only partially functioning mechanical die were used in this module. In the future, fully functioning die will be used and the bus voltage will be increased. At 2 kV, we see a rise time of 37 nanoseconds during turn on, yielding a DVDT of 55 volts per nanosecond. In summary, a PCB integrated bus bar and gate driver was designed for a high density, high voltage silicon carbide MOSFET power module. An innovative module system interface is proposed which voids the need to adhere to standard creepage and clearance requirements, enabling a record power density figure. Numerical optimization techniques are employed to expedite the design process and deal with the high number of design variables and complexity of the field grading geometry. The bus bar was built and experimentally demonstrated a partial discharge inception voltage of 11.6 kV RMS under a 60 Hz sinusoidal excitation, ensuring safe and reliable operation of the power module up to its rated voltage. A gate driver is integrated into the bus bar PCB and the power module is dynamically characterized using a double pulse test up to 2 kV. Future work includes dynamically characterizing the power module up to its rated voltage and current and eventual converter integration. This work is supported by Power America. Thank you for your attention.